for some more perspective on all of this, I spoke earlier with Miles Pomper. He's a senior fellow in the Washington office of the Center for Nonproliferation Studies. Now, I asked him what's so attractive about this energy of the future. It's environmentally safe if you're able to do it. Uh, the resources that are involved in it are, uh, you don't have fossil fuels, you don't have uranium that you have to dig out. The basic fuel that's using is seawater, and you don't even need a lot of it. A uh, thousand tons of seawater would give you uh, basically all the power you need in the world for one year uh, versus like 24 billion uh, tons of coal. Uh, and uh, so it's an, and it's an unlimited uh, source of energy eventually. Yeah. You said if you're able to do it, which <laughs> I think is the key thing, because right. a lot of people say it's, it's the future or it may be a fallacy. It's, it's right. tough to do, isn't it? Right. I mean, there's this, you know, a line that people like to use about fusion, which is it's the uh, energy of the future and always will be. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, you know, people have been working at this for 60 years. They've always seen the potential for it, but actually making it uh, feasible both in a scientific sense and ultimately a commercial sense is uh, very difficult because you're trying to heat, uh, to, to make fusion happen, which is converting two lighter nuclei into one heavier nuclei. You just need an enormous amount of energy uh, to overcome the electrical uh, forces that prevent that. In, in uh, Francis's story, which uh, just aired, um, it, they're talking about getting this reactor online by 2050, which I guess really says right. a lot about just how difficult this is. And one of the other things, of course, is the cost. And, right. and China's uh, working with other countries, which I guess brings down the cost, but it's still very expensive. Right. And that's the other issue. A lot of people say, can it ever be commercially viable? Right. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, even if you can get to the scientific part, which, I mean, China's ahead of everyone else in this, but even there, it's... You know, it's it's not at a point where you're really getting much more energy out of the uh, reactor than you put into it. You just have to put all this enormous energy to get to the point to get to a fusion reaction. Uh, to make it commercially viable, you need about 10 times as much energy to come out of it as you put into it. And we're, you know, so that's a huge leap in, in capability. What are, what are people looking at? Are they, uh, boy, there's, there's a silver bullet out there if we can just find it? Or, or what do people say when they talk about this? Well, I mean, we're... At this point, we're actually doing a little bit better than people expected in the sense that, as I said, this has been a long-term effort, but um, to get to the technology, I mean, there's, there's two basic problems. One is you have to heat things to an enormous temperature. Uh, right now, the Chinese uh, reactors got up to about 50 uh, million degrees, um, and um, you really want to get up to at least 100 million. Uh, and uh, the project in France, which is the big international collaboration, is supposed to get to 150 million. Uh, degrees. Uh, and then you have to confine the energy once you actually uh, get it up to this, this plasma, up to this temperature, you have to keep that plasma in the container. Um, the, and that part has actually uh, made a lot of progress. They've, they've been able to get a lot of progress in confining it and a certain amount of progress in heating it. So, you know, there's been progress, but still it's a long way to go. And as I said, then you got to get to a point where it can be commercially viable, which is a whole another level of capability. And, and you throw out these numbers as a rather matter-of-factly, but, but it is mind-boggling. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, scientifically, it's amazing. I mean, they, even if we never use it as an energy source, just that we can do this. I mean, this is what heats the sun and the stars in the universe. I mean, we're replicating that in the world. Well, it's fascinating to talk to you about it, Miles. Thanks so much. Sure. Thank you.